Hi, everyone. Welcome to this edition of Addington News. Well, here we go. Darren Williams has joined the conversation because last Sunday, Darren, we had the opportunity to hand over the cup to Merv and Meg Butterworth. Of course, their outstanding pacer, copy that, won the IRT New Zealand Cup last November. They weren't able to be here. And if you haven't caught up with it, go to uh, Harness Unhinged on Facebook. Nigel Armstrong was there and was able to record it for us. And yeah, pretty special for them to get their cup, their miniature, and you know to be able to acknowledge uh, them alongside John Hartnell, the chairman, uh, for what they achieved last November. Yeah, like gut wrenching for anyone that couldn't be on course last year, but to have a cup winner uh, and not to be able to be here. Fortunately, Merv's had success in the cup before, of course, with Arden Rooney, but it still cuts pretty deep when you've got a horse and, and uh, he's in a New Zealand Cup, not only in the race, but wins it and you're not able to be on course. Uh, they did explain to us that they celebrated quite well. I think Merv did the did the ironing. Did the ironing, yeah. <laughs> uh, they did have a bubbles later on. So, look, it was, it was great to have them on course. Uh, the ability to be able to film it and show people that, you know, really pleased that Nigel was able to do that and you are able to act as MC for us. Uh, Chairman was able to be there and and uh, shake hands and, and do the things that we would normally have done in a wee bit more grandiose manner. So uh, that's, that's done and we move on to... This year's IRT New Zealand Cup, which is, I think, 97 days away, something like that. Yeah, not too far away. I know tickets, the public tickets go on sale on the 1st of September. The corporate's just talking to Joe McMaster. The, the phone just keeps ringing. People want to book. The, the space is limited. So if you are thinking about having a function as part of IRT New Zealand Cup Day, they pretty much have to book now. Yeah, they do. And as we say, we've got a couple of surprises up our sleeves uh, that we're working on now, um, building towards the big race. And um, yeah, the, just keeping an eye on the Facebook page, on the addington.co.nz page, keeping up to date there and more information will come out as we work through. But Hospo is going great. Uh, one thing that is happening on course today, Greg, uh, new commentators windows for both commentators. Yeah. Uh, they were in a... Pretty ordinary state, I think it's, it's fair a to say. while overdue, wasn't it, to be fair? Yeah, look, they've done a good job. They've been there since the stand was put up, but um, we wanted to get that job done for um, both Andy McCook and for uh, Matt, Matt Cross, Cross on course. And uh, there'll be no excuses now. They're going to be able to see clearly <laughs> out those windows. Yep, you're not wrong there. Um, there's a bit of damage there, though. So they, they've stood the test of time, and uh, I'm sure those guys are really looking forward to having a clean new window to look out of. Hey, Darren, last Sunday we completed the Winter Rewards um, races for $20,000. There were five of them. Gee, there were some good performances, and I think the right horses won those races. Um, Make Mine Sundown won the early one. The horse that stands out... Uh, Smithy's tear and we'll have a look at him at the back end of course he now will probably go through the spring features and may turn up in the IRT New Zealand Cup and of course the Bloss the ultra consistent the Bloss for the Borkowskis after winning the Darren de Philippi Memorial beautifully handled again by Sarah O'Reilly who's now two for two on her um, she took out one of the others so uh, yeah it was a really good day how did we go turnover wise? Yeah look turnover was was okay um, turnover on uh Thursday night with uh, smaller fields was 740 odd thousand, somewhere around that mark. So we bit down because we didn't have the numbers. Sunday for a Sunday meeting, I think, um, based on the middle of winter and everything else, was really pleasing turnover wise, if, uh, just on 940,000. The course with stakes going up on Sunday, as we've talked about in the past, that's where that equation of profitability comes into play. Uh, so last week <clears throat> was the first week uh, since we've been racing during this period that we've actually lost money overall, um, down about 130000 including the cost of running the meeting and the stakes. So the amount of money generated by GBR, by the betting revenue for the two days collectively, less the two lots of stakes and the costs of running the meeting means that we're about 130 behind. Uh, so that's a significant number. Um, it doesn't mean that you don't have stakes that are higher and we're moving into a period where the stakes are higher but it's that balancing act for the code and for the clubs to earn enough money to offset that to make sure that we're going forward and not backwards each time we're running a race meeting. Yeah. Um, since we started racing in this period of two meetings um, a week we've now had uh, what if we had 16 of them with two to go um, until last week the profit was around the 
640, 650,000. It's down to about 511,000 now. But you're still talking about a half a million dollar profit in that period. And that's without running a whole lot of features. So it's just that balancing act. And, um, you know, we're not hiding behind the fact that last week, uh, whilst the racing was good and we were able to put $20,000 stakes in people's pockets, which is what we all want to do, um, there is that balancing act of making sure that you can earn. To be fair, on Sunday, um, the punters had a good day. The bookies yeah, had a bad yeah. day. Yeah, so the, GB, um, so the GBR was well down, wasn't it? Yeah. It was. So it was only 9%. Um, yeah. So the bookies have had a, a rough day. The punters have tailed them up a wee bit, which, are, you know, <laughs> the end of the day is still good for things because, you know, they reinvest. They reinvest. They reinvest. Yeah, yep. so it's it's yep. a combination of things that leads you to to that loss. But we're, as I say, not hiding behind the fact that it's very difficult. It's difficult for all clubs to try and make sure that that balance fits properly and, and that the spend of stakes is at least being covered by the income. We're doing this on Wednesday around lunchtime and not far from here at Rungiora. Very pleasing to see some horses stepping out for the first time, many of them. Oscar Bonavina's, <clears throat> excuse me, going around in the trot, but you've got Steal the Show, the Falcon, uh, Classy Brigade, Henry Hubert, all, all going to the trials, and therefore we're not far away from the National Handicap. Yeah, look, really starting to get excited. Habib Dienta was back at the trials yeah. yesterday with Matu Atana. I know Alta Wise Guy, BD Joe, are making their way down here. So, um, like always, it'll take a little while for these horses to get into a rhythm of being comfortable enough at the trials and workouts and their preparations before they start racing. But to kick things off, the first of the group races is the Morris Holmes Vars, and that is on the 26th of August for $30,000. The same night, we have the Basil Dean Trot. Um, so that's, what are we, uh, three weeks away. Yep. So next week, we're going to run the national uh, national meeting. Uh, thing from the past, I guess, which yep. we've done the last couple of years. We're going to attempt to run a handicap pace, uh, so the national handicap, and we're also attempting to run a free-for-all trot. So we could be light on numbers next week, but there's been some solid indications that we could be okay, even if they are small fields. But pretty much from then on, uh, Morris Holmes Vars, Avon City Ford Cup, um, yep. Audio Cup, Hannah Memorial, all of these Johnny races start to come into play and yeah. things get a little bit exciting. Daffodils have already popped up and so now are, are the superstars. So it's going to be exciting. Yeah, absolutely it is. Um, we race Friday, Sunday again this week. Look, in, in hindsight, and it's and it's an evolving thing with the new calendar, maybe this week should have been finals week or last week could have been, but then we didn't have two meetings off the back of that because it was always going to be some attrition as a result of running those finals last week. Yeah, some of them have disappeared. They, they hung on like grim death to get themselves to the finals, and that's always the case. It's a little bit like Jules weekend. You know, they're, they're there till then, and then they, they disappear. Um, so we're down a wee bit this week. We've got two small cards, um, but we, we're already full with uh, functions this Friday, including a large group for midwinter Christmas, plus a number of other groups already booked on course. So it was essential we run a meeting. And Sunday, of course, is the Breeders' Launch, the Canterbury Standard Bread Breeders as part of the New Zealand Standard Bread Breeders Programme, uh, having launch uh, functions right around the, around the country. And this is our one this Sunday, John Mooney, and the team, Rebecca, and the team from um, Canterbury Standard Bread Breeders have got this in motion, and they had more than 100 people last year. They have sponsorship involved for the races and everything else, and it's a really good time to hear from a lot of the studs, hear what stallions are available, and start looking at those bookings as we move th to the spring and those mares look to be served. So it's an exciting time. It's almost like turning the page, and we're ready to go with a fresh, fresh set of things leading towards the cup. All right, we'll get right into the full preview very shortly. I thought a couple of good bets this week. Uh, Sounds of Cash, race five, number nine, looks thrown into that race. Carter Del Getty to do the driving, and Resolve was good last week. Uh, she's getting closer to a win, race six, number one. So if you want to have a multi, that might not be a bad way to go. If you want to stick around for the full preview of uh, Friday night, you can do so. Okay, so just an eight-race program. So race one's the early quaddy and race five's the, the late quaddy and, and keep an eye on those jackpots, as was said. Race one, um, $12,000 stake, the IRT Your Horse, Our Passion Trot, 2,600 metres. 
Yeah, the beautifully bred, uh, majestic son, five-year-old mare with purpose uh, out of some direction who won 20-odd races and, and was such a quality performer for uh, Justin and Lynn Smith. First up run was good, would definitely improve off it, had trolled brilliantly before that, can easily win a maiden and probably will do that on Friday night. So the five on top to beat six, Harpenny Bridge. Of course, we know Murray Edmonds has got his health issues at the moment. The team are rallying around him. Uh, Michael Howard, uh, Ray McNally, these sorts of people making sure these horses are getting to the races and they're racing really well. Uh, and she was excellent last week and behind another of Murray's trotters in Emily. Uh, Kayan, the three, as consistent as you'll get. Amber Hoffman, Brad Williamson. And Rakiro Warriors way better than that first up run. I expect a better run from him. Five, six, three, seven in the first. And I should have mentioned race one gets underway at 5.34. Uh, race two is the Cup Week Hospitality Packages on Sale Mobile Pace, a 1,980-metre race, and gets underway at 5.59. Yeah, I think Man United gets a chance, uh, has had to go back at the start a few times from wider draws, comes up with a much better draw this week. Um, does have good early speed, so I expect Ricky May to put him in it. And Brendan Hill's team's racing well, so I'm, I'm happy to have it on top. I reckon he's a ripper, is a better horse than what his form's shown. And I had a good chat to uh, Graham Court about the son of Captain Treacherous last week, and he said just doesn't know anything. Uh, I reckon John Dunn will be a bit more aggressive on him this week, so expect an improved run from him. Bobby Waterhouse is clearly going to win a maiden and just keeps going good races and will grab one shortly. And then you've got Take a Hike and Trouble Supreme drawn to their inside. But, yeah, I'm happy to be on Man United in the second. Race number three is the XECM Sport Mobile Pace 1980 at 6.24. Yeah, Morrissey's the one to beat here. Solid third last week in one of those uh, winter reward races and behind Kings Down Atom. Uh, racing great for Jeff and James Dunn. Expect another very big run here. Obsession will come up favourite. And look, she'll probably win the race, but she'll be short. So if you want to take the shorts, go for your life. But the second row following out Lizzie Richter, who we're just not too sure what Lizzie's going to do. She either performs or she puts on an act. So... Yeah, I don't know if it's the best barrier draw over the short course. Same can be said for Bubba Scrub. We know that uh, he's got the quality, well, he has gone against the better three-year-olds of his year. Uh, he comes up with the inside second row, but he follows out Playboy Prince, which might not be ideal for him. And then you've got Tasman Tempest, who keeps going good races. Uh, Wilson House strives for his dad, Michael, and I'd give it an each-way chance too. It's quite a good race, race three, but I reckon Morrissey can take it out. I was actually talking to Jeff Dunn the other day. Uh, Greg, of course, he's got those two superstars to come back. The Falcon, winner of the New Zealand Championship, and, of course, Labour, who um, has had another wind operation and, and reportedly very successful. So another couple of up-and-comers into that grade, along with Terry. So, you know, it's exciting going forward. Race four is the Spectators Bar Handicap Trot 2600 at 6.54. Yeah, look, it's a beautiful race for Madeline Stowe. I know she got it wrong last time and behind the Bloss last weekend, but prior to that, she'd gone some cracking races and behind Royal Pride and, and against the Bloss uh, in that junior driver's race where she finished second when Crystal Hackett drove her. Um, she steps, what she generally does, puts herself in the race. She She's in this up to her ears. Don't mind Miss Yo, much improved performance last time. The mobile was of good assist wide, or well, she's unruly off the 10 metres, Blair Orange will give her plenty of room and if she can step she'll be a chance because there's only uh, one horse off the front here, that being Mickey J so effectively uh, the field's all off the same same mark, the two Murano didn't have much luck last week just got back on the inside and actually charged through coming around the last bend and wasn't bad after that I, I reckon Murano could be in this too along with Emily who did take a wee while to win that maiden, eight starts to be exact uh, but generally when that happens, it's not too big a step this time. Sometimes you're up against those horses that won six, seven, eight races. That's not the case this time, so I reckon Emily might go a good race too, and then you've got the likes of Trot to Chevron, who has a motor, but is still learning the game, so take that one on, uh, on trust if you like. But Madeline Stowe, a good chance. It has won 10 races, so it's into this race beautifully. She doesn't normally get things wrong, Greg. Unfortunately, she did when no. it was a twenty thousand dollar race, but she's normally pretty well mannered. Uh, race number five is the first leg of the Lake Quaddy Avon City Ford Mobile Pace, nineteen eighty at seven twenty three. 
Yes, Sounds of Cash will be pretty happy not to spot Mikey Maguire or Smithy's Terra in this race, and therefore she's absolutely throwing in. Carter Del Getty, claiming junior driver, 1980. Her record over this distance is outstanding. She's won three and been placed nine times. So uh, I reckon Carter will put her in the race at the right time, and she might just be too powerful for them. So I'm happy to be on Sounds of Cash. Over Azur Ahai, who's fresh up. This one trained by Ken Barron, has Blair Orange, has had a trial, trialled okay, and behind Chris Kyle. Um, I'm expecting a big run uh, from Azur Ahai. Shanika gets a barrier draw this week and hasn't had an opportunity for a wee while. Um, well, when I say that from last week, when it drew outside second row, the prior run, it galloped in the score up from the same spot. So if she can get her manners right, she'll be right in this. And the other one I don't mind is Cruiser. Now, Cruiser's been poking around against the better horses all the way through winter. You know, the Hazers and Smithies, Terriers and Terries. It just hasn't had the right sort of race. Gets the right race this week, Darren. Don't let Cruiser slip under your, your guard. Comes up with a middle front row draw over the 1980. Uh, does have the ability to go forward. So, yeah, I, I give it a rough each way chance. But one of the bets of the day is Sounders of Cash, race five, number nine. Race six is the Fahey Fence Higher Handicap Trot, a small field but uh, very competitive as these races all are, 2,600 metres at 7.54. Resolve just got one spot too far back and a brilliant drive from Matthew Williamson to get Jimmy Carter home. Um, she was good late and I think she's nearing now the peak of her powers, so I think she's a great chance off the front. She's off there with Paris Prince who is also a chance, just didn't quite get it right at the start last time. And maybe having three horses directly 10 metres behind might not suit him this time either, but he does have the ability. Uh, Repeat Pat is a horse that's going places, just keeps on, or did through the winter through June, has had a bit of a freshen up for this and missed uh, a run. I think it was in the Darren de Philippi, or it might have been last week where it was scratched, but uh, clearly has the ability to be right in this, as does uh, Fighting Fire, who's fresh up, and the other one I thought maybe Show Me the Grey, who uh, just wasn't quite at its best at the start last time, but he doesn't normally do that either. But oh, I'm keen on resolve, so I'm happy to back it straight out in the Fahey Fence Eye. Race number seven uh, is the Lamb and Haywood Pace, a 2,000 metre standing start race at 8.25. Yeah, tricky it will be, but a small field means they're all going to get their chance here. Um, who steps quickest? Sports Babes overdue, we know that. I thought Rebound's been good in its last two, or well, it's only two races, and I talked to Regan Todd about that the other day, and he said, look, he just doesn't know anything. He's only just cottoning on. Now, Robbie Close got a bit of a holiday for coming out too quickly on him in the first race there on Sunday, and um, he, he again hit the line strongly, though. He's starting to get the game, and um, if he's able to step from the one, it's not always the easiest draw, as we see in, in the 3,200-metre races as well. Sometimes you 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 lose a length because the other ones have that bit of uh, camber of the track to help them get going. But he'll win races rebound, so he might very well do that Friday. So one four four one, uh, then rapid response and uh, Bondi Luster because you know Ivan Court's horses generally step, and she'll probably do that. So one four six two, I'll go in the seven. Now the last race on the card, an eight race program. First direct taxis mobile pace nineteen eighty, and this one gets underway at eight fifty five. Yeah, two Rob by Art Major here, Ulta Meteor, backed off the map last time and has been backed in the size stakes uh, on Cup Day 2 as a result of that. Out of the uh, strong Telfer barn, uh, the Stonewall team looked very impressive last week. Um, I can't see any reason why he won't just step up and win this as well. Uh, Van Shard's a, a pretty nice horse for Brendan Hill, but it's got the wide front row draw, a classical act, one on debut, and wasn't too bad second up as a good draw to operate from. And Catherine should have won more than four races, Darren. She'll be punching around in all those country cup type races and she'll pick up her share. Don't worry about that. The Bruce Negus team are racing very well. But I, th I think we'll see another excellent performance from Ulta Meteor, which will make him really hard to beat in the last. Look, all of the punting information, addington.co.nz, as we say, we have the fields plus the selections on there and pick up as many punting pieces of information as we can by midday on race day, including as many trainers' websites as we can, Facebook pages. Matty Williamson really doing some unique things out on the track with a camera while he's jogging one round and going through his horses. There's a lot of good stuff there that's happening with those trainers, so it's worth having a look at that on race day as well. 
Uh, we race again Sunday with the, the um, Breeders' Big Day there. Race one gets underway at 1.04, and the last is 4.25. So a nice tight program, eight races, uh, three fillies and mares races. So we're supporting those as much as we can. We'd like to have a few more horses in them, all the same, Greg. But uh, there are three fillies and mares races there. As we say, that's a big day for the Breeders'. We're going to leave you with a winter award win of Smithy's Terror last Sunday. And gee, didn't he make a statement? He is a horse that's gone from intermediate grades and is a real live chance, perhaps as an underdog at the moment, uh, for an IRT New Zealand Cup. And he could be well, on Darren, that he, pathway. He broke 310. He broke 310 mm. in July, which is just unheard of. And he won by a cricket pitch. Uh, he's come a very long way. What about the stock of Terror to Love? So you got him and Terry. Uh, both likely to be in the cup. We know Terry's already fronted up on cup day, but um, yeah, I, I think it's pretty cool to have a three-time winner now leaving horses that are going to start and ultimately what's his race. Yeah, and look, I mean, the the owners were all here, uh, plus family and friends, and they were pretty excited, uh, as they should be with a with a performance like this. So we want to leave you with Smithy's Terry capping off uh, the, the 31st of July meeting the Winter Rewards Race and uh, he could be worth a dollar on in the IRT New Zealand Cup. Have a good night Friday and Sunday, and we'll catch you next week. Annie, classy dancer, and Cal Drogo at the back. 29.9 was the first quarter. A thousand metres to go. The leader is Smithy's Terror by a length. On the outside, second, happy place in the trail. Third is Serious Moonlight. Gee, they're on to go about 310 here. 1 1 is Cheezel. Three back on the inside is off the edge. Three back the artist Shards Fury. Then came Sweet Bell, first class. Badly held up to the inside Evangelist. Then came Smoke and Annie. Classy dancer and Cal Drogo. 700 metres to go and the leader is Smithy's Terror second quarter 30 and 5 60.4 the half two lengths away happy place serious moonlight can't hold the back of the leader Cheezel holding fourth then came off the edge from Shards Fury down the side the leader Smithy's Terror happy place trying to go with him Cheezel ran to third serious moonlight put out the white flag Shards Fury ran to fourth leaders really got them rolling here 300 metres left to go Smithy's Terror has left them to it 29 Nine, nine third quarter put an absolute gap in them he's left them breathless holding second happy place then came Cheezel from Shards Fury first class Evangelist running on but he'll be the only horse in the photo Smithy's Terror a massive win and a star of the winter Smithy's Terror got them by nine Evangelist runs second third across Caldrogo fourth in was Cheezel then came happy place 